Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. This video is on regression forecasting. So I'll be looking at a time series uh, where we have a non-stationary time series with a trend and random component using regression and I'll use the problem solving approach. Let's start with a monthly time series and in this monthly time series we plot the data and the first thing we want to determine is stationarity. Well, stationarity really talks about how much variability there is around some stationary mean. What we can see, the line increases from left to right and goes up linearly, that it's not stationary. It's not level, so it's non-stationary. Next is choose your components. Well, the non-stationary nature of the time series will introduce error around that stationary mean. So this error right here is the cause of variability. So the non-stationary nature of the time series is the cause of the variability around the stationary mean. So that right there, that variability is referred to as a trend component. But the variability around the line, it's not a straight line, and that's referred to as a random component. So now we have two components, a trend component due to the non-stationary nature of the time series, and a random component, the variability around the trend line. Next is select your technique and there's where the table comes in. If you have a non-stationary time series with a linear trend and random components, then the technique of preference is regression. And I might add right now this is a trend line. Well, we have a linear trend line. You can have nonlinear trends, which we'll talk about later. So linear regression is our technique of preference for this video. Next is estimate your parameters. Well, when you estimate your parameters, there is where you regress the time series onto the month. And in regressing your time series onto your month, you'll get your intercept of 20.75 and the slope of 3. Well, the regression can be done much easier in Excel. So let's look at Excel. So here's my Excel spreadsheet. I've typed in the X and the Ys. I've typed in my intercept and slope. But we can calculate this with Excel functions, like an intercept here, I can say equal intercept, open parenthesis, and so uh, it prompts you for the known y's, with the y's here, left click and drag, and that's going to be b2 through b9, comma, the known x's, a2 through a9, return, and there's my intercept. I can also say slope, the known y's are here, comma, and the known x's. Return. So I can use functions. I can also graph this, highlight the x and y, go to my insert, come over here to recommended charts, down here click that, click OK, and I can actually graph it uh, with my plot. We can see we have linear regression here. There's our non-stationary time series with a trend line. But if I can hover over that and right click I can come down and add a trend line. And when I add a trend line, notice that uh, we can do exponential, logarithmic, polynomial, power series. We can do nonlinear regression, which is not the topic of this video. And watch for other videos in Harper Classroom for nonlinear regression. This is linear regression. So we can also come down here and display the equation on the chart. And so there's my intercept and slope. And then I can also display the R-squared value. Let me move this over so we can see it. And there's our R-squared value, which is the percent of variability around the line. Well, the R-squared value is nothing more than, than a measure of the correlation. Well, the correlation, as we see here, is 0.996. That's the same as the R-value. Uh, well, that's also a function. Corel, correlation, the first part of correlation, array 1. Now correlation really doesn't look at regression. It doesn't regress one number onto another number. It just looks at the relationship between numbers. So correlation is not the same as regression. So the first array here, I'll just use the x's, comma. The second array is I use the y's, and then I press return. And the correlation is 0.998. The r squared value then is the r, r times r. So when a equals this number, I can just square it. I can either multiply it by itself or raise it to the second power. 
uh, and there's a 996, 996, so I can do correlation. Now at this point I might add that uh, this is least squares regression, and least squares regression simply takes the error, or the residual, or the difference, or the deviation between the data point and the model, or the regression line, which is your estimate, that difference is error, bias, you square it, and you minimize the square, and come up with your intercept and slope. And that's a mathematical technique, not a statistical technique. Now, if you assume that error follows some distribution, say, example, a normal distribution, then you have a statistical technique. And in your statistical technique, then you can do your confidence intervals, test of hypothesis, and all your statistics. Well, you can do that, too, in Excel. So let's do that. Up here, we can say, um, under data, we can come under, under over here under data analysis. And if you don't have data analysis over here on the right under your data tab, then you go into file and you do an add-in, and add it in. Now under your analysis tool pack, you have a, different, a lot of different types of statistical analyses. I can come down to regression. It asks for my input Y range. Well, I'm gonna, this time I'm going to include my Y. I'm also going to include my X. Since I included my X and my Y, I'll click here, I say I have labels. So in those arrays, I have my labels. We don't do constant as zero. That's special types of regressions, which we're not looking at in this video. I can also have confidence intervals. I can, uh, if I say OK, it's going to give me the output in a new worksheet. In other words, it's going to give me a new worksheet down here. Or I can say an output range. Now in that output range, I can specify a cell. Uh, I have my data here. Let's click that cell right there. So beginning right there, it's going to give me my uh, output of my regression. I can also click residual table, standard, standardized residuals, residual plots, line fits plots, uh, normal plots, if I wanted to. Let's just look at our output right now. That's part of statistics. Uh, I say OK, and there it gives me all of my regression. And this is my statistical regression. I can highlight this, go to Home, Format, Auto Format, and now when we look at this, now we can see we have regression statistics. There's our uh, R-squared value, 996. There are R values, 998. That's the square root of the R. Adjusted R-squared down here in your NOVA table, it's going to adjust for the number of uh, parameters in your model, your regression model, which is 1. Uh, you have your standard error, which is the square root of the mean square of residuals, the mean square of your model. And that's uh, 0.25. And the number of observations. And down here below, here's where you have your coefficients, uh, your intercept term 20.75, your slope 3, standard error, and here's where the statistics comes in. You have your uh, T statistic for test of hypothesis, your p-value, and the significance f is the p-value for the regression. This is the p-value for the coefficients, confidence intervals. There's where statistics comes in. Now I may just recommend uh, watch for other videos in Harper Classroom where we will be talking about uh, statistical linear regression. Well, this video is on uh, forecasting. So let's go back to forecasting. So let's continue on. Now that we have our intercept and slope, the next step, obtain your forecasts. Well, we have our intercept and slope, so we can come down here, bring our intercept, bring our slope down, and our forecast is going to be for the next time period, time period 9. So we put 9 in here, we get 47.75. That's going to be our forecast. Well, now that we have an intercept and slope and we know what our trend line is, we can forecast into the future. For example, I can do my forecast for time period 10, my forecast for time period 11, and just continue on into the future. Well, that ends the video on regression forecasting. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.